Modifying a 5 inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive. This is part 15, making the steam turret and another coat of paint on the boiler backhead. And in this episode, I'm going to start with the paint. Frequently, when I go to Blackgate's Engineering, I buy some of these. These are Humbrol Senator brushes. I really do like these paint brushes, they have very soft bristles, and I always seem to get a good finish when using them for brush painting. And here's one in action. This is a second coat of paint on the boiler back head and it's looking good. Please note, this is not a king scale or silver crest model locomotive. This engine was bought directly from the manufacturer in China. And a few viewers have asked, why do I keep saying this? Because this locomotive is very similar to a king scale or silver crest locomotive. And before starting this series, I had a word with the managing director of king scale and silver crest and I agreed to put this disclaimer on every video just to avoid any confusion. On screen at the moment are all the steam valves. Originally, if you remember, they were painted black, but now they're just nicely polished and they're going to look good on the turret. But I haven't got a turret yet, I have to make it. And here's the process for making a turret. First of all, I put a block of cast gun metal in the machine vise on my milling machine. And the first thing to do is to clean off the top surface. I'm showing this part of the job with the video running at a higher speed just to save some time because it's a very slow laborious process and a quick reminder always cut towards the work never away from it. Originally this piece of cast gun metal was not square it's tapered so it comes out of the mould. I need to make it square so first of all I cut one surface then I turn that over and cut the other surface and after a while by rotating the piece of work in the machine vise it eventually becomes a square piece of gunmetal. And here it is. The square piece of gunmetal is on the bench and I've marked it out to drill the holes to take the valves. These are just four marks made with a felt tip pen at three quarters of an inch spacing. Optionally, you can use a scriber to mark on the felt tip pen lines at exactly the spacing you need. But for me, this is near enough for rock and roll. My eyes will do the rest when I come to drill the holes. Now that the piece of gunmetal is squared in section, I can now hold it firmly in the four-jaw self-centering chuck fitted to my Smart & Brown lathe. This is a Smart & Brown Model 1024 lathe. And just like me, this lathe is a bit old and decrepit in places, but most of the parts still work. What I'm doing at the moment is just machining a bit of a register on the end to make it look something. And after centre drilling the end first, I use a twist drill to go all the way through. This is a 9 30 seconds twist drill, which is tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. And now I'm threading the ends of it. First I thread one end, then I turn it round in the chuck and thread the other end. I intend to fit these boiler bushes into the square section turret. While I think about it, I call it a turret. I think that its real name should be the steam manifold. But as long as you know what I'm making, that's the main thing. And what am I doing at the moment? I'm using a micrometer to just check the sizes of these boiler bushes so I can use the correct drill to fit them to the manifold. Once again, I'm not using any kind of test apparatus to find the centre. I've moved the centre drill to the front of the work, which when I look down the end of this piece of work, it confirms that it's in the right place. So I can just go ahead and drill the holes. My drilling machine, by the way, is terrible. I bought it a few years ago, and I wish I hadn't really. The good thing about it is the table goes up and down by winding a handle and, believe it or not, it is allegedly a British-made machine and it's diabolical. It's never been accurate, but I work around it. The motor starting capacitor doesn't work anymore, so I have to spin it by hand. I switch it on and just flick the chuck, which is really bad practice, I know, and it's a health and safety nightmare, but I get there in the end. I mean, just look at this, the centre drill is wobbling all over the place, but by default it usually finds its centre. When I work at the steam workshop, I use a drilling machine called a Fobco Star. That's very old and very accurate. I've drilled the holes to take the boiler bushes two different sizes, and in this clip I'm drilling a hole underneath to take a fit in that I have yet to make, to allow me to screw it into the top of the boiler. And the next job requires limited ultraviolence. I'm using this excellent nylon faced hammer. This is made by a tool company called Teng Tools and it has a nylon face at one end and a rubber face at the other end. 
I'm quite impressed with the machining of these Blackgate's boiler bushes because they are a nice tight fit in the holes and I want them to be. So with all of the boiler bushes in place on the manifold it's nearly time for the silver soldering operation but I still need to make the fitting for underneath to allow me to screw it into the top of the boiler. But before I go any further, just to make sure everything lines up, I've fitted the valves to the turret. And yes, the good news is everything lines up. In this clip, I'm using my smaller Boxford lathe to make this fitting that allows the turret to screw into the boiler. And now it's time for the silver soldering operation. So I'm in the outside part of the workshop and I don't have a brazing hearth. It's on the cards to get one. But I need to clear some space first because the outside part of the workshop is full of stage lights and lighting stands, etc. I really must get my act together and sell these lights because I really do need the space. In this clip, I'm getting the part ready for silver soldering. I'm applying the flux. This is Easy Flow number two flux. But Easy Flow silver solder is no longer available, so I'm using Silver Flow 55. I'll put the details on screen. I'm using quite a large burner head for this job. I need plenty of heat. Also, I've fitted a nut to the threads underneath the turret in an attempt to prevent the threads from being overheated by the blowtorch. It would be much better if I had a brazing hearth, as I mentioned earlier, because fire brick reflects the heat back at the work, allowing it to be brought up to temperature more quickly. So here's the technique, plenty of heat, and as soon as the silver solder flux gets to be transparent, apply the silver solder. I applied this early, but as soon as the heat gets right, it flashes around the joint. Normally when I'm doing these demonstrations, I use too much silver solder, but I'm not doing in this case. The silver solder is neatly flashing around the joint. A special note for beginners to silver soldering, under no circumstances must you put the piece of metal into some cold water whilst it's still bright red. Doing this would possibly cause the silver solder to become very crystalline and brittle, so what you need to do is let it cool to black, that is the term. Let it cool to black, then drop it in some water. The thermal shock of it being dropped into the water will help to initially remove some of the silver solder flux residue and some of the oxidisation from the part. So what I'm doing at the moment is temporarily fitting this to the locomotive to see what it looks like to make sure it fits, and it seems to be OK. That's the second injector valve, this is the whistle going in place, and finally the blower valve. Now that the turret is fitted in place on top of the firebox on the locomotive, I need to see what I'm going to do and find the best method of fixing the pressure gauge to the turret. By holding the pressure gauge siphon in the position where it's going to be, I take a measurement, which is three quarters of an inch from the end of the turret. All I need to do is just machine up an extension piece from a piece of brass hexagon, and here it is fitted to the turret. I can definitely live with that. Here's a view from a different camera angle, and as you can see, it looks OK. So I dismantled it and put the main body of the turret into the acid bath, and I left it in there for several hours. Then I cleaned it up, and this is what it looks like. This is the permanent fixing. Everything's in place. A slight modification. I put a glove valve on the end, and this is to allow me to quickly and easily attach an airline to the engine. Time to give it a bit of a run, I think, to clear out all the water from the cylinders following the hydraulic test. And everything seems to work okay without any leaks. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.